right, my friends, welcome back. It is April 15th, 2022. I hope you're all having a good beginning of your weekend. Now, I have something I want you to check out here on Google Earth. I'm sure there's plenty of people out there that have done these specific coordinates, but I want to explain something very quick. For those of you that have followed my channel in the past, you know I love searching Google Earth. There's just something about the possibility of finding something that no one's ever seen before. We've done a lot of Antarctica videos on Google Earth and things like that, but this is a little different, and I kind of stumbled on this yesterday and did a little bit of research there's plenty more to go but I wanted to share with you something I found here now basically what you're looking at here is the cross section of the earth there's many ways to get this line here the way that I did it is there's a program you can download or an add-on to Google Earth called the UVG grid now if you take a look these are said to be the ley lines of the earth or energy line a lot of ancient civilizations quite literally built their cities and places they lived on these ley lines it's actually where the term feng shui comes from you know like the way you would line up your living room or bedroom and some people say this actually changes your energy you can actually feel good about the way a room is laid out or in bigger terms the way your city or civilization is laid out now very quickly you can see some of these cross sections here show some pretty famous places in fact right here to the east of Florida we have the famous Bermuda Triangle area this is UVG 18 and if I back out here you can see a lot of these cross sections pop up all over the earth now for this video specifically I want to show you how I got this center line of earth as I said there's many ways to do this but you can see it lines up with perfect cross sections of these big energy points so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom out a little bit here and I'm gonna turn this off really quick I'm gonna put on a more basic look and this is actually called the UVG basic grid line so these are the big cross sections of the main ley lines we have and you can see obviously the Bermuda Triangle one is still there there's one down here to the east of South America and if we drag over we can see there's a couple more southern Africa northwestern Africa so basically what I'm showing you first here is how I was able to get the exact diameter or cross section of the earth which is this red line right here so now this is where things get pretty interesting now I'm gonna reorient ourselves so we can see the United States and South America and here is Africa this is just for reference but go ahead and type in the coordinates of 0-0 you can do this in many combinations of ways you could do 0 0 degrees or 0 south 0 west or 0 north 0 west either way it's gonna bring you to the same spot there's only only one zero zero on planet earth and I'm gonna take you to it right now and you're gonna find something interesting right off the bat in this entire area I already have this range marked with a line here to measure how long it is but you can notice that the exact middle of this mountain range here is where the center of the earth is or where zero dash zero is if I zoom out here you can see that there's not a lot of visible mountain ranges on the seafloor except for when you get one to two hundred kilometers away we have this grouping of mountains here that slopes down to the south but the first thing I notice about this is that there's this big mountain range directly at these coordinates so of course I took the time to measure where the slope begins and then over the center of the mountain range and then down the other end now I brought up the ruler because I want to show you how long this mountain range is again this is from slope to slope and we're looking at nearly 18 miles you can see that right here in the diagram so this is quite a big area so for starters I find it interesting that at 0-0 the center of this mountain range is exactly the center of these coordinates so that right there makes me very interested in this and really quick I actually went ahead and took a snapshot of this at a different angle and you can clearly see this is a mountain range on the seafloor this is that red line we saw on Google Earth and again Again, this just stuck out to me the fact that this mountain range was kind of sitting by itself with nothing else around it and the fact that it's at zero dash zero now getting back to Google Earth here you notice these icons with the letter I on them that follow this line exactly again this red line here is the hemisphere line and I noticed these icons here so I started hovering over them and check out what you see let me get rid of the measurement tool here and you click on this one and it says transit of Venus 1874 this one right here is transit of Venus 1761 now you're gonna see some repeats here this is also transit of Venus 1769 so we're beginning to see a pattern here of transits of Venus which is a very rare thing and I'm gonna get into that in just a second as well but here's another icon that says it's a little hard to see unless you zoom in point of private person I have no clue what that term means so of course knowing me I had to punch it into Google and to be honest with you I could not find anything that talks about the words point of private person and the coordinates of 0 0 or 0 south 0 west there are some things here on how to use Google Earth and things like that but nothing connects the hemisphere line or Venus or the fact that the coordinates are 0 0 
All right, so let's zoom back out here and give you another reference of where exactly we are. And you can see there's a fairly high number of these icons that just follow along this line, and they're all transits of Venus. So that also began to pique my interest, so I wanted to look up these transits of Venus and see just how rare they are. So just to bring this all together, not only is 00, zero a specific point on Earth that lines up directly with the hemisphere border, but it also falls right on the direct center of this mountain range that kind of sits by itself, and it also happens to be where these icons are showing different transits of Venus beginning in the 1700s going through the 1800s. Now I remember there was one in 2004 so I did some research and within this research I learned some interesting things. So every 243 years we have a transit of Venus and you can see right here it says transits of Venus are among the rarest of predictable astronomical phenomena. They occur in a pattern that generally repeats every 243 years with pairs of transits eight years apart separated by long gaps of 121.5 years and 105.5 years. Another bit of information says this transits of Venus are so rare because the planet's orbit is tilted just over three degrees from the plane of our solar system. This means that most of the time Venus passes above or below the sun's disk as seen from Earth. Not only that, but some of these transits are actually more rare than others and they usually last around six hours and 40 minutes for them to cross the face of the sun, at least when it comes to the view from the Earth. And of course, you could see pictures of these. There was actually a pass in 2004 and one in 2012 as well. And you could see they lined up on different parts of the sun. The June 5th, 2012 transit was on the northern side of the sun and then the June 8th, 2000. 2004 transit was on the bottom half of the sun. Again, this all depends on the exact angle of Venus, which is off center by three degrees, making this event super rare. But when it comes to that 1769 transit of Venus, specifically on June 3rd, 1769, it was a British navigator, Captain James Cook. Now, something I want you to notice here is that when this transit of Venus was noticed, it was during a voyage on the island of Tahiti. And going by the map that pops up, you can see Tahiti's right around this area here. It's in the South Pacific Ocean, kind of next to Australia right in this area where Tonga is, New Caledonia, Fiji, those islands. If we head back to Google Earth here and we zoom back into this area of 0-0, the coordinates we talked about, and we get right back in there, I couldn't help but notice that that 1769 transit of Venus is being labeled right on the hemisphere line. If you open up this little pocket of news here, you can see it labels all the transits. 1639, 1761, we got the 1769 one there, 1874, 18 1882, 2004, and then this was actually posted before the 2012 transit, and it was actually predicted. I calculated some details for the next transit of Venus on June 5th through 6th, 2012. So again, for those of you that want to follow along and check out Google Earth, all you have to do is zoom into this area of 0-0 coordinates. You're going to find this mountain range dead in the center of where this ends up, and all you got to do is click on the gallery icon here on Google Earth, and you'll see when you turn it on, the icons pop up, which all fall on the hemisphere line. And it's just really interesting how this all comes together. I don't know if it's some sort of data glitch or something like that, but to have all these transitions of Venus right on this small area of the hemisphere border, all grouped in an area where it's 0-0, the only place on Earth with those coordinates with a mountain range in the dead center of it is just a little fishy to me. Now, there may be some sort of simple explanation. That's what I need you guys for. If you know anything about this or if you know a little more about Venus than I do, I don't claim to know a lot. I'll tell you that much, but I know enough to know these little bits of information lining up like this is definitely interesting. For those of you that are still with me, I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. I'll continue with some of the research on this topic and see what I can figure out. I ask that you guys do the same. Let me know down below what you think. Shout out to Canada. I hope you all have a good rest of your weekend. I'll be back tomorrow. I'll see you then. Take care. Bye-bye. Stop right there, my friends. If you have not already, click that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell icon. Click all and you will get all notifications from this channel. And trust me, you won't be disappointed.